What's up? I'm Elsa. And I'm Baron. And we just drove our 13-foot scamp from Kansas City to the mountains of Colorado. With my Mini Cooper. We were pretty skeptical about this, just as most people were. The Cooper's not really intended to be a tow vehicle at all, but we love the Mini, and we didn't want to have to get a different car if we didn't have to. And the more we looked into it, the more feasible it actually became. In regards to power, it's a 2006 supercharged Mini Cooper S. It weighs around 2,500 pounds and pushes around 160 horsepower. Like we said, it's not made to be a towing vehicle, but it is rated to tow around 1,500 pounds. To give that some perspective, a stock Ford Escape weighs about 3,600 pounds and pushes 170 horsepower. The Scamp weighs a whopping 1,000 pounds, less than half the weight of the Mini Cooper. So added together, the weight of the scoop with the Scamp behind it feels a bit like driving a stock Ford Escape. It's kind of fun that as we stop to get gas and stuff, instead of going inside and buy snacks, we can just go inside of the Scamp and get our own food. Sunflower seeds, cashews, dried cranberries, and some chocolate covered espresso beans. Dang. The Scoop has a six speed manual transmission. This allows us to adjust the gearing to the situation. If it were an automatic vehicle, the car wouldn't know that it had a scamp behind it. It would gear itself as if everything was normal, which would complicate things. Since it is manual, we can stay in first if we need the torque or ride sixth to optimize gas mileage. As we looked into the situation, we realized that the clutch would most likely be the first thing to fail. We just replaced the clutch with a racing clutch, so it should be up to the additional strain. We'll let you know. We're going to be doing kind of an experiment using different speeds and documenting different variables that will affect miles per gallon. The engine hasn't gotten hot at all. We've been kind of looking for that. The wheels, so that's something else too. They're not hot. The brakes are fine. Our first tank we went 70-ish miles an hour, and that only gave us just under 12 miles per gallon. We were estimating it would be 20. We just stopped for gas again. This time, going 60 miles per hour, we reached about 18 and a half miles per gallon. Are we just gonna continue 60? Yeah, I'm comfortable with it unless we're gonna experiment more. One of the biggest concerns many of you had was the brakes, especially once hitting the mountains. Snow! We were pretty sketched out by this too, but did all the homework we could before setting sail. The scoop has four-wheel oversized disc brakes, also meant for racing. And the bigger rotor allows for heat and friction dispersion. In racing conditions, brakes get hot, a similar situation to coasting hills in Colorado. The Scamp doesn't have brakes of its own. We were curious if it would feel like it was pushing on us as we stopped, but even without the addition of the two snow tires we've got on the front of the scoop, we couldn't feel a thing. Hey, after 682 miles from Kansas City, we reached Breckenridge, and our final challenge was to make it up the snowy driveway of our friend's house. Wow. Against all odds, the scamp and the mini did better than we could have ever anticipated. Dude, it got the fucking hill. What? <laughs> That's hilarious. That you got up the hill? Yeah, like, no problem. We freaking made it. We just have to put everything back together. We're super stoked to be here and we're really excited to bring you guys along with us on our adventures with Camp and the Scamp and the Scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>